So the story of Flappy Bird should be a highly inspiring one for any mobile developer or any budding mobile developer. This is the story of an app created by just a regular guy, a 28 year old guy called Dong Nguyen. It was a very simple app, something that anyone could really build, but it just happened to be in the right place at the right time and he got really rich and famous from it. So this just goes to show that you don't need a huge budget, you don't need to be a coding genius, you don't need a massive publishing company behind you. If you have a relatively good game, a simple idea, and you make it, then there's a chance that you can still be successful thanks to the distribution platform that is the Google Play Store. And this really would be an easy app for anyone to build, even if you're a complete beginner, and especially if you use a tool like Unity, which just makes the whole process that much simpler, that much quicker. So in this video, I'm gonna demonstrate that by showing you how to make a Flappy Birds game for Android in just 10 minutes using Unity. You'll go from a completely blank screen to a fully working game, and with just a few extra tweaks, things like a high score, maybe a menu screen, you'd be able to release this on the Play Store, and who knows, maybe make your own millions. Make sure you remember me when you're rolling in piles of cash. Of course, before we begin, you are gonna need yourself a copy of Unity, and you're gonna need to set that up with the Android SDK. I'll leave a link in the description down below to show you how to do that. There's also gonna be a link in the description down below, which will take you to the post that goes with this video. That will share a lot more detailed instruction, all the source code, etc. So if this is a little bit speedy for you, then go there and you can get more detailed information and go at your own pace. So we don't have much time. Without further ado, let's get to it. Let's get to it, to it, to it. Here we go. Okay, so first you're gonna create a new project, make sure it's a 2D project, and I'm dragging in some sprites here into my scene that are ready made. If you wanna make sure the sprites are the same size as mine so you can follow along exactly, then set the bird to be at position zero, zero and 0.5 scale and set the pipe there to four on the X and Y axis. We're gonna copy that. We're gonna make another one that's gonna be upside down like so. And we're gonna rename this one pipe down. We're gonna add a rigid body to the bird. So select that and then the inspector, select add component. And then we're going to add the constraint on the Z axis that will stop him from spinning around and rotating. Now we're going to add another component, that being a polygon collider. That's his bound. So he'll bump into things and Unity will know when he touches something. And we want to tag him as a player. This will help us to refer to him later in the code. Drag the camera onto the bird in the hierarchy there on the left. And that'll make sure that the camera moves in relation to the bird. Now we're going to add the same collider, this time a box collider, to our pipe and then to the other pipe. We only need the collider there, no physics necessary. Now I'm making three new scripts in a folder I've created in the assets folder there, C sharp scripts. That's character, pipe up and pipe down. So basically a script for each of our three sprites we have. Open up the character script first. We're going to make a public rigid body 2D. So that is the uh, the physics attached to our character. Now I'll make a public float. That's a, an accessible um, number that we can change. We're gonna make several of these. One's gonna be the move speed. One will be the flapping height. And we can change that later on, you'll see. We're gonna create a public game object for the pipe up and another one for the pipe down. So that means we can access those elements in our script. So first we need to tell uh, unity where the rigid body is. So RB equals get component, and then that's the rigid body 2D we have attached to our game object there. Okay, and now in the update method, that's a method that's called repeatedly ref as the game refreshes, we're going to add some velocity to our rigid body, the script, the physics script attached to the character. So this is going to keep the character moving constantly to the right, and we're keeping the Y coordinate the same. See, so by saying RB velocity Y there for the Y coordinate. We're basically saying whatever the Y velocity is, keep it like that. Okay, now we're using an if statement. So that means that the following code will only uh, execute if this statement in the brackets here is true. And we're saying that if the player clicks the mouse button, then we're gonna add some movement going upwards. So that's gonna be our flapping motion. Now a mouse button is translated as a screen touch anywhere when you save this and run it on Android. Okay, now we're gonna do another if statement and this time we basically want to just detect when our character goes too high or too low. So when they're out of bounds and then we're gonna kill them because we don't want them to be able to fly over or below the pipes. That looks strange and it's cheating. Okay, so now we're gonna create a new method and this one's gonna be called death. 
and that's where we're going to handle our player death. So yeah, a method is any piece of code enclosed in curly brackets and you can call it from anywhere else within your script. So we're saying public void death. Void means that it's not returning any data, it's just performing a function and public means that we can access it from other scripts. And we're going to remove all velocity because we want him to be stationary when he respawns. Then we're just going to literally move him by taking the transform there, transform being his current position, and setting it back to zero, zero. Now we're going back in here, we're going to add the component, the script, to our player character. Change these public variables here in the inspector, and then there you go. So that's why you make public floats like that, so you can change them from outside of the script. Okay, now you're going into your pipe up script, and I'm creating a reference to our character object, and also to our other pipe, our pipe down object. So again, we need to tell Unity where to find those. So the character is going to look for an object with the character script attached to it. Remember, we just added that component to our character sprite. Then we're going to put another if statement in the update method, which remember happens repeatedly every time the game's refreshed. And we're going to say if the distance between the character and the pipe is bigger than 30, then what we're going to do is we're going to destroy our pipe and we're going to create a new one ahead of us. So basically, when the pipe goes off the left of the screen, because remember the character keeps moving forwards, we need it to disappear and we need a new pipe, a new challenge to appear in front of us. So now we're creating three random variables and these are random numbers. And we want that because we want the pipes to be in slightly different positions each time. So we're getting a position for the X, for the Y and for the gap, the distance between the two pipes, the top and the bottom one. We want to make sure that we move the pipe the correct distance in front each time, but also add a little bit of a random element just to keep things fresh and to keep things fun. Now we're going to instantiate, meaning create a new version of this game object. When you say game object with a small g, Unity will assume you're referring to this game object that the script is attached to. So we're creating this new game object using a vector, that's a position, and we're making it in front of our character, um, 30 uh, spaces in front, but at the same time, adding on that random element. And then we're keeping the height uh, accurate with a slight random element as well. And then we're going to instantiate the other pipe, the pipe down. And that's why we added that reference to the pipe down up there at the top. And the reason we're doing that in this script rather than in the pipe down's own script is because we've generated these random numbers. And this way we can make sure that they stay aligned with each other without having to do some, you know, do hickory to make sure that the distance stays the same by sharing those random variables. Just makes more sense to put it here. You'll see how it all works in a moment. And then we're going to destroy this game object. So once we've created the new pipe ahead, we need to destroy the old one. If you don't do that, they're going to keep popping up ahead and it will take up a lot of memory. OK, now we're creating one more method. And this is going to be one of the most useful methods you use a lot in Unity. It's the on collision enter 2D. So that means that when something touches the collider, this happens. And we're saying when the thing that touches it has the tag player, remember we added the player tag to our character, then we're going to call that public method from our character script called death. So we're saying character.death. That's the great thing about a public method. It means that you can call that bit of code from other scripts attached to other objects. So add the component, add the script to the pipe up there. Same way you did before, add component scripts. There we go. Click play and now each time you touch that pipe, you respawn, it kills you. Great. Now we need to do the same thing, of course, for pipe down, except we've handled a lot of the code already in pipe up. So this is going to be a little bit easier. We just need to repeat a few of those same steps we used before. So we've created a reference to our character up there and we're going to tell Unity where the character is. We've done this before, find objects of type, character, meaning it's looking for an object with that character script attached. OK, and then in the void update, remember the method that is repeatedly called each time the game refreshes. We're saying that if the character is a certain distance away from the pipe again, and then we're just going to destroy the game object. No need to respawn it because it's being respawned at the exact same time that the, the upwards one is being created. And then we can just copy that on collision enter script from the other place, from the other script. And there you go. Now I'm creating a new folder called prefabs. Make sure you add that to the pipe down um, sprite, by the way. 
A prefab is a ready-made game object with all your attributes and scripts attached. So I've deleted them from the scene and just put them into my prefabs folder there. Now you can see here in the pipe up script in the inspector, I have that option to add my public game object. And so I'm putting in there the pipe down. So that means that the script will know where pipe down is and it'll be able to find it and instantiate it. And because it's doing it from the prefab, that means that it's going to have all those important attributes attached. As you can see, it worked there nicely. So now I'm just gonna add in one more method called build level. And this is where we're gonna instantiate the first batch of pipes, because we need to make sure we've got a good few pipes up there ahead so that they, we're not gonna have spaces so that they all fill the screen. And if you use the same um, numbers that I did in the same sprites, then you can just copy this, pre, uh, pause the screen and copy it out, but play around with where you want your pipes to be. You can add random positions to start with if you want. In the interest of good housekeeping, it would also be a good idea to destroy the pipes every time the player dies. You can add that in later on. But now, when we press play, because that's in the character script, they're all going to be instantiated. Of course, we need to add those public objects from the prefab. It's very important you add from the prefab, not from the scene. Now when we click play, those ones I've instantiated in my build level script, which is called at the start of the game and also when the character dies, will be right here. So for mine, they're going to be in the same position every time. And then as we go forwards, they're going to start disappearing and reappearing in front of us. And there you go, it works nicely. So that's my Flappy Bird game. It's so much fun. I could do this for, for days. You know, I don't want it don't want it to end really. So yeah, there we go. We've run through that all quite quickly, I realise, but you know, slow it down where you need to. And hopefully you've grasped the, grasped the concepts. If there's anything you don't understand, then click the link in the description down below and I go through in a bit more detail and explain things like prefabs, what they are. They're just a really useful way of creating a game object with all the attributes already attached. And also it means that if you change an attribute on one, it will change those qualities across every instance of that object throughout your game. So you don't have to make lots of changes. A few people said last time they wanted to see how you actually create um, an APK, how you make this into a game that you can share. And to do that, you just need to go into build settings. Then you choose Android as your platform and then you choose switch platform. Then if you click player settings, then it'll open up in the inspector, a whole bunch of options where you can say things like um, the package name, the version, the um, Android version you're targeting, etc. And then you just hit build and run and it will build it. And one more thing you need to do before you hit build and run is to save your scene, that's the level, and then add that to scenes in build. So there you go, that's one way you can create a nearly fully working Flappy Bird game in just 10 minutes. It really was pretty quick and simple. There's not much more you'd need to do to make that fully functional and release it on the store and who knows, start getting some downloads. So hope you found this video useful and interesting guys. If you did, then please leave a like, please share it around, comment down below, subscribe to the channel. All those things help us out greatly. Like I say, check out the links in the description down below for more information. And whilst you're there, why not look around, check out androidauthority.com for we are your source for all things Android.